Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.2.1.1, the structure of eukaryotic cells from the AQA A-level biology specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. We need to know about the structure and function of various components and organelles of eukaryotic cells, including the cell surface membrane, the nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, the Golgi apparatus and Golgi vesicles, lysosomes, ribosomes, the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticula, the cell wall and the cell vacuole. Note that some of these organelles or components only exist in certain types of cells. A cell vacuole is only a feature of plant cells, for example. I will cover what components or organelles belong in what cells as we go along. Finally, we also need to know that in complex multicellular organisms, eukaryotic cells become specialised for specific functions. Specialised cells are organised into tissues, which are organised into organs, which are organised into organ systems. Finally, the specification says that students should be able to apply their knowledge of these features in explaining adaptations of eukaryotic cells. Now, there are many examples of specialised cells throughout the specification. I will provide a few examples of specialised cells and their individual features in this video, but there are many more that are mentioned as you go through the rest of the course. So, just to provide a short introduction about cells. Organisms can be eukaryotes or prokaryotes. Prokaryotic organisms are prokaryotic cells, i.e. they're single-celled. Eukaryotic organisms are made up of eukaryotic cells. So, let's compare the structure of plant and animal cells. I'll start by showing you an animal cell. It is very useful to be familiar with what I'm showing you now. Note that you can distinguish between Golgi apparatus and rough endoplasmic reticulum by seeing that the rough ER has ribosomes on its surface and is consistent with a nuclear envelope, whereas the Golgi apparatus has round vesicles at the end. So, comparing plant and animal cells, Plant cells have the same organelles as animal cells, just that they also have a cellulose cell wall with plasmodus mater, which are channels that allow the exchange of substances with other cells. Plant cells also have a permanent vacuole and chloroplasts. I'll cover what all these organelles do in just a second. Just before we do this, let's briefly cover algal and fungal cells. Algal cells are a lot like plant cells. They have the same organelles, as well as a cell wall and chloroplasts. Because they have chloroplasts, they can also photosynthesize. Algae can be unicellular or multicellular. Fungal cells are also a lot like plant cells, but with two key differences. They have cell walls made of chitin, and they don't have chloroplasts, so cannot photosynthesize. So let's have a look at the organelles we need to know about, starting with the cell surface membrane. This is the membrane that is found on the surface of animal cells and just inside the wall of other cells. It is mainly made of lipids and proteins. The cell surface membrane regulates the movement of substances into and out of the cell. It also has receptor molecules on it, which allows it to respond to molecules such as hormones. Next we have the nucleus, which is a large organelle that is surrounded by a nuclear envelope, which is a double membrane and contains many pores. The nucleus contains chromosomes made from protein-bound linear DNA and one or more structures called a nucleolus. The nucleus controls the cell's activities by controlling the transcription of DNA. DNA contains instructions to make proteins. The pores, which are called nuclear pores, allow substances such as RNA to move between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. The nucleolus is the site of ribosome synthesis. Next we have mitochondria, which are usually oval shaped. They have a double membrane, of which the inner is folded to form Christi. Inside is a matrix, which contains enzymes involved in aerobic respiration. Mitochondria are the sites of aerobic respiration, where ATP is synthesized. They're found in large numbers in cells that are very active and require lots of energy, such as muscle cells, for example. Then we have chloroplasts. These are small, flattened structures found in plant and algal cells. They are surrounded by a double membrane and also have membranes inside called thylakoid membranes. These membranes are stacked up in some parts of the chloroplast to form grana. Grana are linked by lamellae, which are thin, flat pieces of thylakoid membrane. Chloroplasts are the sites where photosynthesis takes place. 
Some parts of photosynthesis happen in the grana, and others happen in the stroma, which is a thick fluid found in chloroplasts. Next we have the Golgi apparatus. This is a group of fluid-filled, membrane-bound, flattened sacs. Vesicles are often seen at the edges of the sacs. The Golgi apparatus processes and packages new lipids and proteins, and also makes lysosomes. Then we have Golgi vesicles. A Golgi vesicle is a small, fluid-filled sac found in the cytoplasm that is surrounded by a membrane and is produced by the Golgi apparatus. Golgi vesicles store lipids and proteins produced by the Golgi apparatus and transport them out of the cell via the cell surface membrane. This is known as exocytosis. Next we have lysosomes. A lysosome is a round organelle surrounded by a membrane with no clear internal structure. It is a type of Golgi vesicle. Lysosomes contain hydrolytic enzymes, such as lysozymes, which are kept separate from the cytoplasm by the surrounding membrane and can be used to hydrolyze invading cells or worn out components of the cell. Then we have ribosomes. These are very small organelles that either float free in the cytoplasm or are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes are made of proteins and RNA. They are not surrounded by a membrane. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis, i.e. the site where proteins are made. Then we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is a system of membranes enclosing a fluid-filled space. The rough ER is consistent with a nuclear envelope. The surface is covered with ribosomes. The rough ER processes and packages proteins made at the ribosomes. Then we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which has a similar structure to the rough ER but has no ribosomes. The smooth ER synthesizes and processes proteins and lipids. Next we have the cell wall, which is a rigid structure that surrounds cells in plants, algae and fungi. Note that in plants and algae it's made of cellulose, whereas in fungi it's made of chitin. The cell wall supports the cell and prevents it from changing shape. And finally we have the cell vacuole, also known as the permanent vacuole. This is a membrane-bound organelle found in the cytoplasm of plant cells. It contains the cell sap, which is a weak solution of sugar and salts. The surrounding membrane is called the tonoplast. The cell vacuole helps maintain the pressure inside the cell and keeps the cell rigid. This stops plants from wilting. The vacuole is also involved in the isolation of unwanted chemicals inside the cell. So, now that we've covered the main organelles found in eukaryotic cells, we just need to have a look at cell specialization. No cell can provide the best conditions for all functions. Therefore, cells of multicellular organisms are each specialized in different ways to perform a particular role. So, here we have the zygote, which is the fertilized egg. The zygote undergoes mitosis to form embryonic stem cells, which are each unspecialized and identical. Embryonic stem cells undergo differentiation to become all the different cells within an organism. All cells within an organism are produced by mitotic divisions from the fertilized egg, therefore they all contain the same genes. However, only some of the genes in a cell are expressed, therefore the shape of the cell may vary and the number of different organelles also varies. So let's have a look at some examples of specialized cells, starting with epithelial cells of the small intestine. Folds in their cell surface membrane, which are called microvilli, increase the membrane surface area, which increases the rate of diffusion of products of digestion, such as glucose and amino acids. They also contain lots of mitochondria to provide energy for active transport of these substances. Then we have sperm cells. These need lots of energy to swim to the egg, and therefore have lots of mitochondria to provide this energy. The head contains hydrolytic enzymes to break into the egg. A sperm cell also has a long tail to swim to the egg. And finally, we need to know about tissues, organs and organ systems. A tissue is a group of specialised cells working together to perform a particular role. For example, xylem tissue. A group of tissues working together to carry out a particular role is called an organ, 
for example, the heart, lungs, roots, and leaves. A group of organs working together to carry out a particular function is called an organ system, for example, the digestive, respiratory, and reproductive systems. Great, that would be the structure of eukaryotic cells covered. We have covered the structure and function of various components and organelles of eukaryotic cells, including the cell surface membrane, the nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, the Golgi apparatus and Golgi vesicles, lysosomes, ribosomes, the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticula, the cell wall and the cell vacuole. We have covered specialised cells and how they are organised into tissues, which are organised into organs, which are organised into organ systems. And finally, I have provided a few examples of specialised cells and their individual features. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, next time we will be covering the structure of prokaryotic cells and viruses.